everyone. So this is the lecture on dealings and restraints on dealings. As we've learned before, uh, the National Land Code en enables land development to be undertaken on alienated land. Um, so we have learned that on alienated lands, we can undertake subdivision, conversion, amalgamation, uh, partition, and um, which was what we've learned last week in class. So land development also uh, enables the land to be sold to someone, to be leased, uh, to be rented out to someone, to be um, used by other people. So this is what we're going to learn this week um, on dealings and restraints on dealings. Now, for this lecture, there are two components uh, of the lecture itself. One is on dealings, the urus niaga in, in Malay, okay, urus niaga. So dealings comprise transactions such as transfers, leases and tenancies, charges and lease, and also easements. Um, we actually are not going to touch on um, the right of way, which is also another type of uh, dealing on land. Um, I think for that, uh, you can read on your own. Uh, this is not covered under this uh, course. Uh, so the transactions, which um, can be divided into transfers, leases, tenancies, charges and leases, and also easements, um, can be prevented from occurring uh, by something which is called restraints on dealing. So these are two different things. One, on one side, we have transactions on the land. Okay, What can be done on the title? Uh, but on the other hand, what can be done to stop the transaction from happening? So we're going to learn the restraints on dealings, which uh, comprise registrar caveat, private caveat, lien holders caveat, and finally trust caveat. Um, again, there are also other restraints on dealings that we are not going to cover in this course. Um, and um, uh, things such as prohibitory order, okay, which is actually not under National Land Code per se. But it's also a restraint on dealing. Okay. Now, it is important for us to understand the definition of dealings before we proceed with the lecture. Now, according to Section 5 of National Land Code, it says there dealings are any transaction with respect to alienated land effected under the powers conferred under Division 4 of the Code. So, what does that, what does that mean? Okay. When we say that uh, uh, dealings only concern alienated land, it means that dealings are only applicable to land with titles. Now, uh, recall back what we learned before regarding uh, land disposal under the National Land Code. There are two types, right? So the first one is uh, disposal that uh, concerns uh, alienation. Uh, the other one is uh, disposal uh, through non-alienation. So the non-alienation, uh, by, by way of non-alienation, such as temporary occupation license, permits, reserve. So it clearly shows here uh, under Section 5 that you cannot do any dealings on non-alienated lands. Uh, I use the term non-alienated lands in my class, but you know that it means disposal by way of non-alienation, uh, which refers to toll, permit, and also reserve. So it means if there's any attempt okay, to transfer, for instance, tra transfer is a type of dealing. So if there's any attempt to transfer toll, a toll land, okay, toll means the land is not alienated, okay, means it's disposed to another person, to one person by way of a license, which is a temporary occupation, occupation license. So in the case of uh, an attempt or a, a transfer of toll, that is not a dealing, a, a recognized dealing. Uh, and therefore will be illegal under uh, National Land Code. So again, dealings here only concern any transaction on alienated lands, so land with titles only. So I hope you are you're very clear okay, um, with that because that, um, the, 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 sorry, the definition of dealings here can be used in court if there's any attempt okay, to, apa nama, to to do any uh, to, to transfer to lease to charge uh, any um, land which was dis disposed by way of non alienation tak boleh eh? you cannot now again as uh, the previous slide showed you there are four types of dealings that we are going to uh, discuss in this lecture the first one transfers uh, from section 214 until 220 leases and tenancies section 221 until 233 
uh, charges and liens, 241 until 281, and then finally we have easements, 282 until 291. Again, we're not going to uh, discuss. There are other uh, dealings that are available under National Land Code, but due to the time restraints and um, apa nama tu, and other factors that are taken into consideration, we're not going to discuss those uh, other dealings under National Land Code. For instance, we have right away. Right of way, uh, um, whether uh, the 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 conventional right of way or land administrators right of way, laro. Okay, we're not going to discuss that under this um, course. Okay, but I hope you uh, you realize there are other dealings that are available under national land code. So if you notice that leases and tenancies come together, right, and charges and liens as well are uh, categorized under the same category. So. When you see uh, leases and tenancies together, it shows that both have similarities. Okay, similarities. That's why they come under the same category. Okay, leases and tenancies. Those concern rental, but leases are for a long, longer term. Tenancies are for a shorter term. So that is the main uh, similarity uh, between leases and tenancies. But, but there are. Um, distinct difference. Eh? Uh, the main difference between leases and tenancies re uh, regarding the length, the length of the uh, dealing, which is leases for uh, 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 rentals for periods of above three years, tenancies less than three years, and then we have charges and liens as the as a as a as one category. Okay, charges and liens. The similarity is both uh, concerned um, guarantees to borrowing. Okay, borrowings or loans. Okay, but charges and these there are again differences. Uh, but here the difference are in terms of the the what you call the the procedure to create the charges and the liens are uh, quite different. Okay, uh, and uh, importantly from March 1985. Okay, all types of dealings, all types of dealings in agri land, whether it's transfers, leases, tenancies, charges, leases and easements, any dealings in agri land are not allowed if it will result in undivided share of less than 2 over 5 hectare. So it's very, very clear. And this is provided as under section 205, sub 3, of the National Land Code that if the result of the dealing sama ada pindah milik kan transfer lease uh, will result in the in the apa ni in the land being less than 2 over 5 hectare which is 0 0.988 acre slightly less slightly lower than uh, 1 acre yeah it will not be um apa ni approved okay by the state authority why uh, this is because um, uh, the, uh, the state of uh, sorry the the government feels that we need to preserve yeah the agricultural lands of Malaysia uh, if it's less than 0 0.988 acre okay the land will then be uneconomical uh, to um, to to what to cultivate to be cultivated to be planted with whatever um, type of cultivation that is intended. So that's why, that's the main reason uh, why uh, agri lands are not allowed to be uh, transferred, to be, uh, uh, to be and, and also to be undertaken any kind of dealings, uh, which if the result is less than 0 0.988 acre or 2 over 5 hectare. Okay, this slide shows you the grantor and also the receiver of dealings. We can see three columns there. Uh, the first column shows you the dealing type. The second column shows you the grantor and the right uh, hand side you can see the third column shows you the receiver of the dealings. Now, for transfer, the grantor of the transfer is known as transferer. The receiver is the transferee. So, this is easy enough. The transferer is the uh, original proprietor. So the transferee will be the buyer, lah, uh, the new uh, proprietor. So transferer could be, uh, will be the seller of the uh, land. Transferee will be the buyer of the land Okay, in the case of transfer. But transfer can also occur not only through sale. Uh, you can also transfer land due to kasih sayang, due to apa nama, relationship between father and uh, daughter, father and children. Uh, you know, So transfer is just a pindah milik. It's just a um, Giving your rights or, uh, or yeah, giving your rights as an owner to another person. So that is the meaning of transfer. Second, we have lease. Okay, lease. 
the grantor of lease we know as uh, we know him or her as lesser receiver lessee tenancy the grantor is landlord the receiver is uh, tenant okay charge charger is the grantor chargee is the receiver so again this is where students make mistakes yeah regarding uh, banks okay banks they say the charger is the bank no okay the charger is Charger is the land proprietor because he owns the land. Okay, so he charges the land to the bank. So the receiver of the charge is the bank. The chargee, chargee. So charger is the proprietor. Chargee is the bank. Okay, for charge. For lien, the grantor is leaner. The receiver is the lini. Okay, leaner is the proprietor. Lini is the uh, the the person. Uh, the, the sorry, the party that um, lends money. Okay, so receives the lien. For Isman is quite uh, unique. Okay, see the Isman, the grantor of an Isman, because an Isman is a right that you create over someone's land. Okay, so the grantor of the Isman is the servient land. There are two lands. There must be two lands. Okay, we'll see later that uh, Isman uh, requires two lands huh, of uh, different proprietors. Then only you can create an Isman. Okay. So, the grantor is the servient land and the receiver is the dominant land. Dominant, the, the, the proprietor that has a right over someone's land. Uh, this is quite unique. Right? So, remember Eastman, um, servient land, dominant land. And then you have to also remember about landlord and tenant. Okay, And another thing is the charger and chargee. So, these are the three things yeah, that I always stress uh, on my students. Okay. Then uh, we go to this one. Uh, who can be the receiver of dealing? So we go back to section 205, such, uh, subsection 2 of, uh, of the National Land Code, which states that only persons or bodies listed on section 43 National Land Code can receive dealings. And we have covered this before. Okay, Section 43, which uh, uh, comprises um, natural persons, companies, sovereigns. Can I remember that? Societies. Yeah, Go back to our lecture last week. Uh, so, for company, must check the memorandum of association with the company, whether it can own uh, immovable property or not. So, the MOA is normally the birth certificate. Uh, it indicates what can be done, what cannot be done by the uh, by the company or by the association. Okay, What can the company own? What cannot it own? Uh, what can it own means that if... if if the, uh, the the types of properties that it can own is not stated in the MOA, means it cannot own nah, that type of property. Okay, so go back to the memorandum of association of the company to see whether it can own immovable property or not. Section forty three of National Land Code outlines the natural persons, corporations, organisations, and also societies. Uh, who are eligible to con uh, to to do dealings? So we can see there for persons, natural persons, they must be above or at the age of majority, which in Malaysia is 18 years of age. Okay, then corporations, uh, the corporations who are empowered to do dealings must be able to hold land under their constitution. So uh, corp which corporations are we talking about? We're talking about corporations registered under Companies Act 1965. And then we're talking as well about statutory body empowered under their act or enactment okay, to hold land. So we have uh, statutory bodies such as UM in Simlaya because we have, we have our own statute that establishes uh, UM. You know Putrajaya Holdings because Putrajaya Holdings also have uh, um, their own statute that establishes the corporation. Then uh, for sovereigns, governments and organizations, so uh, for these, uh, they must be authorized to hold land under law of diplomatic or consular relations and international organizations as, as well. And then uh, for societies, uh, they, these societies must be registered under Societies Act 1966. Yeah? Uh, and also for trade unions, uh, must also be registered under Trade Unions Act. Now, in order for any dealing to take effect, okay, the dealing instrument needs to be registered. So, as what we learned before, register is everything under National Land Code. So, same here with dealings. The instrument of dealing uh, refers to forms. Yeah, they are uh, respective form for each type of dealing. So, sections two o six 
uh, sub 1 states that every dealing shall be effected by the relevant instrument prescribed for that purpose. So, what does that mean? It means that for each type of dealing, there is a prescribed, there is a relevant form uh, that must be used. Uh, it is the correct form that may, must be used for, uh, for, for, the, for that particular dealing. For instance, okay, we will learn later on, for transfer, we have form 14A, yeah, to transfer land, to transfer the share on the land, to transfer a lease uh, of the land. So you use 14A. Okay, um, um, same with other dealings, uh, we will use the prescribed form for that purpose. And it says that dealing instrument must be properly registered with the competent authority. So in this case, uh, for, for land office titles, for instance, you must do the uh, registration at the land office. For, for PTG, you go to the uh, PTG to do the registration. Okay, so it's very, very important yeah, for the dealing instrument to be registered, for the dealing to take effect, for the sale to take effect, for the uh, for the rent, for the lease, yeah, for the apa lagi, for the charge to take effect must be registered. So it says that the effect of section 206 sub 1 is in mandating. Mandating make, makes it compulsory. Yeah? Mandating registration of dealings is to ensure that the dealings can be done quickly, cheaply and with certainty. Means that once you do your transfer, yeah, you do your you sign your sale and purchase agreement it doesn't end there you need to file you need to register uh, the the prescribed form which is 14a at the land office at the ptg uh, to make sure that the dealing is recorded uh, at the office and then only you can ensure the torrent system too uh, the, the sorry the, the operation of the torrent system uh, the principles of mirror uh, sorry the, the mirror principle and also the uh, the curtain principle uh, will take effect upon the registration okay and thereafter you can say that delays can be done quickly cheaply certainty uh, if we follow the required procedure which is registration of the uh, instrument of dealing so it says that until registered transfers leases charges and instruments are not effective not effective under national land code yeah but if there's um, any contracts in between the parties, of course, you can still enforce the contracts, but it comes under the Contracts Act, not under the National Land Code. We're not talking about getting the protection of the National Land Code, okay, which is uh, much more powerful than relying on a general legislation, which is Contracts Act. Yeah? So, if we go to court, okay, based on two, um, two uh, um, acts, Okay, one party is arguing based on Contracts Act. The other party is argue, arguing on National Land Code. National Land Code will win, will always win because the, of the principle that the specific legislation will always overcome the general legislation. So that is the principle uh, of law that we practice uh, in the courts of Malaysia and I think uh, elsewhere. Uh, it's, it's derived from um from uh, what do you call it? from um, legal principles that has been practiced long time ago yeah so it gives you an example there for instance a transfer of land which is not registered is not recognized by the national land code and the land purchaser cannot exercise the powers as a proprietor until registered so it means that yeah uh, there is a, a sale there yes under contracts right but the rights given uh, under National Land Code for, uh, for the proprietor, <coughs> sorry, the right of use, exclusive use and enjoyment is now withhold uh, or withheld from the new purchaser uh, until the the dealing is registered uh, at the appropriate authority, either Land Office or PTG. The case of Muhammad bin Buyong versus Pemungut Hasil Tanah Gombak and others, 1982, illustrates the uh, operation of uh, the requirement for registration of dealings instrument. So in that particular case, Muhammad bin Buyong presented uh, an instrument for transfer of land, uh, Form 14A. But then uh, the form was not uh, complete. Uh, it does not have, did not have complete documentation. So in that particular case, there was a missing original uh, document of title which was supplemented, which was um, corroborated uh, with a statutory declaration that the original um, um, title was missing. Okay, But at the land office, okay, the 14A was only accepted, uh, accepted, ditulis, dicatatkan, uh, dicatatkan, dia dimasukkan. It was accepted and it was uh, entered into the title, but 
without the sign, without the signature and without the seal of the collector of land revenue at that time. The pemungut hasil tanah refers to collector of land revenue, which nowadays um, they, they've changed, yeah, into land administrator lah, okay. Now, um, so, at that time, okay, um, um, the, 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 the transfer, sorry, the transfer was not perfected, we can see that, it was not perfected, uh, but Muhammad bin Buyung sued, okay, uh, for the transfer, I think, for the transfer to be, to be recognized, they went to court, and then the court, uh, the court declared that, um, due to the inadequate or due to the incomplete documentation, uh, the entry on the register was bare entry, uh, not a complete entry. So the register was not a perfect, uh, sorry, the dealing was not perfected at the land office. Therefore, the transfer was not recognized uh, and, did, and did not uh, get the uh, proper registration. Uh. So, meaning null and void. Lah. Uh, null and void means there's no uh, meaning or there's no effect on the uh, bare entry of the Form 14A of Muhammad bin Buyung. Uh, so that, that particular case um, illustrated the importance of uh, perfecting uh, your uh, dealings instrument. So says there that I told, so how do you perfect? How do you fulfill the requirements uh, for a perfect uh, registration? So it says there are two requirements. One, registration must use the correct dealings instrument or in this case, um, instrument refers to form. So transfers from 14, leases in form 15, charges from 16 and so on. Okay, And we, we will, if you go to the back of the National Land Code, you will see there there are 40, uh, form 14A, for Form 14B, Form 14C, D, and so on. Okay, which all relates to which all relate to transfers, leases, for instance, 15A, 15B, 15C. All of those forms relate to leases. Okay, uh, so lease creating the lease. Okay, enforcing the lease. Semua pun, uh, all those come under Form 15. But we have 15A, B, C, D, and so on. Okay, charges again from 15A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Okay, now the entry. Okay, the entry in the register must be made under the hand and seal of the registrar. So it means that okay, it is not enough for the for the 14A to be keyed in. Nowadays we use the computerized system, right? So it's not enough for the for the transfer to be keyed in. You must also have the hand, the signature, and also the seal, the chop of the registrar for the register to be perfect, uh, to be completed. Otherwise, okay. If uh, if your transfer is just keyed in, last time they were they wrote uh, in the title. So now you key in the system without the hand and seal. It's just a bare entry. Uh, there's no legal weight. There's no meaning to the registration. Bare entry sahaja. Okay, tak cukup. It's not enough. Okay, the first dealing that we are going to discuss is transfers. Transfers is pindah milik. Okay, transfers. Uh, when you sell your property, when you inherit uh, or when you turunkan, uh, we inherit property in case of death and so on, okay, uh, as a gift, for instance, from one party to another, you use transfer, yeah. Transfers uh, are contained in part 14, okay, sections 214 until 220 of National Land Code, uh, which states that section 214 allows. So, what kind of transfer is allowed? One, the whole but not part only of alienated land. Okay, meaning the whole land can be alienated, can be transferred, but not part of the uh, alienated land. You have to do something first. You have to do, remember what you learned before, you have to do subdivision first, or you have to do partition first, before you can transfer part of your land. Okay, uh, so it's very important uh, to understand this. The second one, the whole but not part only of any undivided share in any alienated land. Again, if you are a co-proprietor, say you own one over two share, okay? Uh, Ali owns, you own one over two share, Ali owns one over two share with you, together with you. You are co-proprietors. Can you transfer your one over two share? Can? Boleh, boleh, can? But can you share half of your one over two share? No. According to section 214, transfer for part only of undivided share is not allowed. So what must you do again? Subdivision or partition first. Huh? Your uh, your undivided share just now. And then only you can transfer part of your undivided share. Then 
uh, transfer, uh, sorry, lease can also be transferred, lease of alienated land, charge can also be transferred, and finally, uh, tenancy exam from registration. So, lease and tenancy come together, right? Okay, so tenancy exam from registration is a, is a shorter, uh, shorter lah, cannot say short, shorter term rental, which is less than three years. So, any rent, any rental uh, um, arrangement which is less than three years can fall under tenancy exam from registration or what we call section 213 ten tenancy. So, this uh, tenancy is quite special because it does, it's not mandatory to be registered but can uh, apply or can be, can be protected. Uh, under National Land Code because it's very specific, Session 213 Tenancy, yeah? So this will be very useful, especially in, in the case of, um, what do you call that, uh, land acquisition uh, because Section 213 Tenancy is recognised uh, by National Land Code even though it's not registered, you see there? Okay, now Section 214 also states transfer limitations. So what are the limitations to transfer? One, any prohibition under National Land Code or written law. Now, remember section 205 sub 3 just now, kan? Uh, you can, uh, if the effect of the transfer will result in any, uh, in the land being less than 2 over 5 hectare, is not allowed. Uh, so, that one lah. Any, that's one example. Any written law, for instance, uh, Malay enactment, you cannot, you are prohibi prohibited from transferring your land to a non-Malay, for instance, kan? Uh, so, in the case of Kelantan, which is very specific, uh, you cannot transfer the land to any non philantanist for instance. Uh, so, those are the prohibitions there. For alienated land restrictions in interest on the land can also be a transfer limitation. So, you have to look if there's any requirement for, for written consent or written approval to be obtained from the state authority. Then, you must get the approval first. For leases, charges and exam tenancies express and implied provisions. So, look at the uh, the, the provisions, meaning, sorry, look at the terms uh, of the lease, uh, uh, whether you need to obtain um, up, um, obtain any uh, approval first from the uh, from the proprietor for, for the lease to be transferred to another person. Then, for leases and charges can only be transferred to one or more persons or bodies only as trusti trustees or representatives, okay? Not um, not to two or more uh, for reasons other than this, okay? Now, uh, for alienated land, undivided share in alienated land or for lease, okay, the transfer of these are done through Form 14A, 14A. So, this is the most common form for transfer. Okay, uh, for charge, charge can also be transferred, meaning uh, if you have a, char a charge, right, you have a charge, uh, say bank A wants to sell, uh, wants to transfer the charge to another bank, that can be done, okay, and it can be transferred, the charge can be transferred using the form 14B. So, this is very, uh, very, um, uh, nama, usual, okay, you have this, uh, the, what, the mortgage market, right, in Malaysia, uh, so this enables the charges to be to be transferred from one bank to another or from one institution to another. So in the case of our uh, what do you call it, our um, 1997 uh, AFC Asian Financial Crisis, okay, whereby um, Dana Harta Dana Harta was a uh, was a was a was an institution that was created to resolve the problem of non-performing loans. So at that time Dana Harta uh, bought uh, all the charges to open it, to to save the banks uh, um, to, to save the banks from uh, from being bankrupt uh, so the charges were transferred to Danata and then they took over uh. now 14b for charges and then for estate land is special estate land can also be transferred using form 14d however must get certificate of approval from the estate land board first it's very very special because uh, again the government wanted or the government wants to protect uh, the um, agricultural land in Malaysia. So, estate land, here the definition of estate land. Okay, section 5 states that estate lands are defined as agri land held under one or more titles in the area or aggregate area of not less than 40 hectares. So, 40 hectares is 100 acres. It can be under one uh, title or it can be more than one title. Okay, uh, 
the total land area of which must be not less than 100 acres. So if more than one title, the lands must be contiguous. What does that mean? Contiguous means that at least one of the boundaries must touch. At least one. Okay. Of the boundaries must touch contiguous. But sometimes we have estates whereby um, uh, the, the lands are separated by a road. That's fine because I um, actually the situation is created uh, due to I think like over time. Uh, in some cases, it's very very normal. Okay, due to land acquisition that severe uh, that sever that sever the uh, sever the land into two, um, uh, 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 causing a road now to to run through the estate. So it's okay. Now, fulfillment of procedures, um, which is must use the correct form and also registration uh, uh, must be perfected, will pass from the transferor to the transferee, the title and any benefits, registered interest, section 213 tenant, uh, exam tenancy conditions and also restriction in interest. So all this will be passed on to the um, transferee, penerima transfer. So here you can see uh, an example. I just uh, put here Form 14A for those of you who haven't um, come across. Okay, Form 14A at least uh, in the future. I think you should uh, when you buy a house, okay, you will come across at least 14A. Yeah. So 14A is the form uh, to be registered. Okay, but Form 14A is uh, the transfer of land, share or lease. So share here is for the undivided share just now. Remember, you can. You can transfer your share, uh, but not part of your share. Okay, the whole of your share can, but not part of your share. Okay, so here it shows you I, so your name of whatever of this is your address. Proprietor, are you the proprietor of the land? Are you the proprietor of the undivided share in the land? Okay, or you want to transfer your lease? You are the lessee or the sub lessee under the lease or sub lease described in this schedule below. Ada below nanti. So this is the consideration of the of the transfer. It can be uh, in terms of money, okay, in terms of money, or it can be other than money. Ni uh, other tau in real life. So here you can see if it's between uh, family members, for instance, with, uh, from the parent, uh, one of the parents to the ch uh, child or to the children, it can be based on love, kasih sayang, kan? Okay. So uh, either money or non-monetary. Okay, consideration uh, and as well can be for no consideration as well. So money, uh, non-monetary and then no consideration. Hereby transfer the transferee or transferees name below all such title or interest as is vested in me. So remember title in the land can only have the proprietor or proprietors. Interest you may have the lease, the lessee, the charges, semua tu ha tu lah, charged. Apa nama tu semua interest on land. Uh, we've we've done this uh, in week one punya tutorial, right? When we uh, when I ask, um, can one land have many interests on the land? Yes, boleh have many many interests on one parcel of land. Now the next one is leases and tenancies. Okay, leases and tenancies part fifteen. So again, you see here part fifteen. So all the forms are form fifteen A, B, C, D, and so on. So for leases and tenancies, forms uh, from section two to one until two three three. What is a lease? First of all, you must uh, know okay, the definition of lease. It's a conveyance by which the proprietor, the lesser, grants to another person, lessee of an interest in the land. So only interest, tau. only kepentingan, satu kepentingan, only an interest. Okay, the title still belongs to the proprietor. Ha, dia punya hak tu. Hak milik still belongs to the proprietor. But with the title, he can create many interests. So, one of the interests that he can create is lease. So, in this case, a conveyance. Satu pemberian lah. Conveyance by which the proprietor, in this case, we call it, uh, the, the correct term is the lesser, grants to another person, lessee. And interest uh, for freehold land, the interest must be less than freehold. Freehold is forever, right? So he can grant the lease for, for instance, 99 years, 999 years can, as long as it's below freehold. So 30 years, 60 years, 99 years are normal. Okay, for leasehold land less than the lease period, whatever is remaining. So if it, if the proprietor uh, proprietor holds a leasehold land of 99 years with the remaining uh, term of 
89 years. Whatever the term must uh, that are of the lease, he must grant below the 89 years. So what can be leased? So the, here is special. What can be leased? Whole of the land, yes. Part of the land can also be leased. Now transfer just now, part of the land cannot be leased, right? As it cannot be transferred, right? Now uh, CF means compare compare with transfer so in the case of transfer whole of the land can be transferred part of the land cannot be transferred now sub lessee can grant sub lease to whole or part of his land in his sub lease uh, put again you can create you can you can cuff you can cuff out lah uh, uh, your part of the land your portion of the land to another uh, party to become a sub lease lagi and the lessee, sublease or tenants can grant section 213 tenancy. Section 213, anything less than 3 years. Yeah, the apa nama, monthly tenancy can, quarterly tenancy, yeah, and not any, uh, can be granted by, uh, by lessee, sublessee or tenants. As long as the term is less than what they have. Okay. So for equitable lease and exempt tenancy, so exempt tenancy refers to section 213 tenancy which is not required to be registered. They come with some rights beside the registered lease. Okay? Meaning that their uh, situation where uh, whereby they are not registered, see, see, uh, what it says here, a lease agreement may be void if not registered but still valid under equity as equitable lease. So this is what this means, eh, equitable lease. They have no uh, protection under National Land Code, but uh, but equity may provide some um, protection for them for the equitable lease. Exam tenancy, okay. You look at the if there's any uh, agreement. Uh, a written agreement is always the best. You look at the terms of the written agreement. But what if it's just a verbal tenancy? Verbal tenancy. Verbal tenancy is also recognized. Yeah, but verbal tenancy are tenancies. Okay, that are created verbally. Okay, verbally, uh, but without a written document. Also recognized. Uh, um, and since there's no contract, okay, since there's no contract, you cannot uh, ask for a contracts act protection. But under equity, may also receive some kind of protection, some uh, level of protection. But equitable rights are not guaranteed under equity. It's very hard to prove. It's very hard to claim or to, to seek uh, equities protection if you if you go to court. Yeah, uh, It's very apa nama, uncertain, uh, highly uncertain. Now, the difference between lease and license, lessee enjoys exclusive possession there. License ni, uh, license, uh, meaning that on one land, okay, you may create more than one license, so you do not have exclusive possession. Uh, that is possible under license. You may have one license to do one thing on the land and another license to, to do another thing on one land, so you do not have exclusive possession on the land. But lessee is different. You enjoy exclusive possession. You can exclude others from coming onto your land and doing activities on your land. Uh, the, the anyone who comes on the, uh, who comes into your land, okay, without your permission as the lessee, you can sue them for trespass. Now, um, for lease, it is for a specific continuous duration, and it must be a certain duration. It cannot be uh, uncertain. You say, oh, as long as you want to stay there, as long as there is a house on your land, there is a lease. No, okay. Lease must have a specific duration 10 years 20 years 30 years 60 years 99 years you must have a specific duration okay you cannot give a, a vague qualifier such as as long as you want to stay on the land as long as uh, there is a uh, there's a property or there is a building on the land no uh, that's not acceptable and lease or sublease must exceed three years okay Tenancy lease, uh, sorry, the tenancy which is less than three years is exempted from registration. So this is what uh, we've been discussing, yeah. So anything less than three years is known as Section Two One Three's tenancy exempt from registration. Uh, you uh, you are not required to register, but still you will accept. Uh, you will receive some kind of um, uh, benefit or some kind of protection under National Land Code provided lah. Uh, it's a valid tenancy. There are there are tenancies. Then there are types of tenancies that are not acceptable under National Land Code. For example, 
a tenancy at will. Okay, tenancy at will means there's no legal um, agreement between the landlord and the tenant, be it a written uh, contract or a verbal contract. Uh, no, no, it's just by action. For instance, you have a you have a three year tenancy on the land. Okay, so you've come to the expiry of your tenancy. Uh, the, the three year uh, tenancy was uh, was set out in a written document in a contract. So that's fine. Okay, so after three years, okay, maybe you keep on uh, occupying the property. The landlord also doesn't kick you out. Okay, but there's no more agreement between you and the tenancy. Okay, you pay the rent, the landlord receives the rent. There's no more legal uh, agreement between you and the tenancy. It's just a matter of you giving the rent, the landlord receiving the rent. The tenancy at that point in time is known as tenancy at will. Because at any time, the landlord can evict you. That's because there's no agreement, there's no tenancy between you and also the landlord. So that particular tenancy, tenancy at will, is not has no rights uh, under law. Uh, so, in the case of Land Acquisition Act as well, a tenancy at will uh, will be excluded uh, from being um, in, from being called to the uh, land inquiry, for instance, from being uh, given any compensation, for instance, uh, no compensation. It's, tenancy at will is better than a squatter, okay, but it's not legally recognized and tak maknanya tak ada not legally uh, tak ada uh, there's no rights lah under tenant uh, tenancy at will yeah hope you understand now for lease okay uh, says the maximum 99 years for whole of alienated land and 30 years for part of alienated land this is normal 30 years for part of alienated land normally you have um, in the case of TNB substation, for instance, uh, the the um, what do you call it? the lease given is thirty years normally, uh, only for part of the uh, housing scheme or part of the development for TNB substation. So you can find that in most developments in Malaysia. So in the case of um, lease, okay, registration instrument for for lease is form fifteen A for sub lease is form fifteen B. And says that section 213 tenant, even though there's no specific form okay, to be registered okay, for section 213 tenancy, they still the tenant can still endorse the tenancy on the document of title to protect his interest. So this is advisable, uh, especially for um, for commercial tenants. Lah, uh, if you want to if the commercial tenant wants to protect the section 213 tenancy, uh, which is exempt from registration, no form available uh, for the registration of section 213 tenancy, but can still be endorsed on the title, on the document of title. So that if there's any title search, your interest will appear uh, on the title. Now, section 225, powers to grant leases and uh, tenancies are limited. So these are the limitations uh, to uh, leases and tenancies. One, any prohibitions under national land code or written law for alienated land restriction in interest on the land. Uh, this, sub, this this is subject to the restriction in interest. If a written um, apa, a written approval needs to be obtained from the state authority, then must obtain uh, the written approval from the state authority. Okay. And then for leases, subleases and tenancies, same as transfer before, I must look at the express and implied provisions of the lease uh, or sublease or the tenancy document. And for alienated land, leases or subleases, okay, are subject, uh, which are subject to charge if, if there is a charge on the land. And if you want to grant a lease on that land, uh, the land with charge. Consent of the chargee must be obtained first before you can uh, obtain uh, before you can grant any lease or sublease uh, on the land. Okay. What are, so this is what um, a lease uh, form looks like. So on this um, page or on this slide, we can see form fifteen A, which is list of land. Okay, list of land. So here you can see the name of the writer, address. Okay. Uh, you can lease to the lessee whole of the land, part of the land. So again, okay, compare this with transfer. Transfer, this cannot be done for transfer, part of the land. So the term of the lease, term means the length. length. So the term of the lease uh, for a fixed period of how many years beginning of when, terminating when, uh, from what date to what date also can be done. Yeah. So here month or quarterly as the case may be beginning or what. And that's it, yeah, for lease.
Now next, uh, the rights and liabilities of lessee. Lessee means the receiver of the lease just now. So, in this case, must pay rent at specified times and spe specified manners. Specified times, many quarter legal, um, year legal, uh, month legal, specified manners. Um, yeah, the method of uh, payment, okay, cash, you know. Perform all implied and expressed conditions that runs with the land. Okay, if the condition is to um, apa, maintain in good order, okay, the building on the land, then it must be done lah. Huh? All the conditions. If the agreement is silent, okay, uh, the lessee, uh, the lessee must pay rates, taxes, and outgoings due on property. But if the agreement is otherwise, then you follow the agreement. It's only when the agreement is silent, okay. When the lessee must pay rates, taxes, and outgoings due on property, keep the property in repair, permit lesser or his agent to enter promises, uh, premises for inspection after reasonable notice. Uh, the lesser must give notice first, otherwise trespass lah, because the lessee enjoys uh, exclusive use and enjoyment. Ah, uh, betul. That's the, his right as a lessee. You must. The lesser must give prior notice. Uh, a reasonable notice not one hour before unless it's a very urgent situation for instance apa water tank burst kan uh, itu urgent situation lah but if it's a matter of inspection for instance um, you receive um, interfloor leakage punya uh, ni kan punya apa nama a complaint uh, from the unit above give first uh, give a notice first to the to the lessee that you want to go in and do inspections on the property then only you can go in and then to get the lessor's written consent for transferring, charging, or subletting the, the land or the property. Okay, that is uh, logical. Lah. Uh, you need to obtain the lessor's written consent first before you can assign uh, your, or before you can transfer. You can charge as well. Huh? So, can you charge your lease? Yes, the lease can be charged. Remember just now I said um, from 14, 14B, uh, you can transfer, sorry, you can charge. You can transfer your charge, uh, can so it can be done. Yes. Now, what about the lesser? What about the proprietor? What about the the main uh, person who holds the lease? Okay, all uh, pay all rent due to state authority. Okay, especially the quit rent because if the lesser doesn't pay the quit rent, so this will jeopardize the land and also the lessee lah. Uh, so this is according to section two three zero. Not unreasonably withholding consent for transfer or charge of the sublet of the lease. Uh, so meaning that if there's no uh, reasonable uh, reason, uh, you cannot say no to any uh, any application to uh, transfer or charge the lease. If the agreement is silent, uh, agreement silent, guarantee quiet enjoyment of property to the lessee. Meaning you cannot you cannot uh, apa nama disturb. Uh, the lessee um, unreasonably uh, keep, uh, for instance, keep on inspecting, keep on entering the premise, keep on entering the land. Uh, that is prohibited because you must give quiet enjoyment uh, to the lessee. Where the lease is for part of the building to keep in repair the roof, the main walls and drains and common passages and installations. Yeah, So this is quite similar to strata, right? Strata management in Malaysia, strata management. Right? If you think about it, these are all the common uh, properties lah, uh, kan? Similar, similar, but not the same. Okay, where the lease for part of the building only to keep in repair the roof, main walls, and drains, and common passages and installations. If during lease part or whole of the building becomes wholly or partly unfit for occupation, which is not because of the lessee's negligence, then the whole or part of the rent ceases to be payable until it can be used again. Okay, so. In the case of a fire, for instance, in the case of um, apa, any natural disasters, for instance, that cause the uh, building, uh, either part of the building or whole of the building to be unusable, uh, not due to the fault of the lessee, uh, is due to fire or whatever, which is or act, uh, or natural apa, disaster, uh, which is outside the control, uh, beyond the control of the lessee, then uh, the lessee need not pay rent until the the apa nama the part 
uh, of the building that is um, under disrepair uh, is repaired again. It okay, can be used again. If more than six months, it says that the lessee have the right to terminate. Uh, so this is the um, apa nama the the right uh, of the lessee to terminate because otherwise he will uh, bear the losses lah. Cannot use the property. Now, this is about the determination or ending of leases, uh, whereby there are five ways uh, where leases can be determined, can be ended. The first one is through express surrender. Express surrender when you, apa nama tu, when you surrender the lease lah with the consent or with the agreement from the lesser. For lease and sublease, this is done via form 15C, menggunakan borang juga because again, you need to register the, or you need to uh, delete uh, the, or you need to, uh, cancel the registration before the registered list, right? So for list and sub list, you use the form 15C for section 213 tenancy verbally or any written instrument can be used to determine, okay, uh, the uh, the the apa nama the tenancy. But in this case again, uh, if you want to create a list and sub list, you must get consent from the charge. Again, if you want to determine, you want to end the list and sub list, also need consent from the charge as well. Why is this so? Kenapa ni? This is so the chargee, the bank just now re, uh, apa, understand, not understand, uh, aware, is aware of what's happening with uh, on the property kan? Maybe there's a new, uh, uh, new, apa nama tu, lesser coming, eh, sorry, new lessee coming in or a new tenant coming in kan? So you need to uh, get consent from the chargee. I do not think this is applicable to section 213 tenancy this is i think only applicable to lease uh, longer term uh, because uh, maybe the the chargee will want to know who's the next or who's the new uh, lessee is kan uh, also wants to know if um, apa nama uh, the, the property is experiencing anything uh, any reason uh, why the uh, the the lease is terminated uh, before its expiry date. They would want to know, kan, if there's anything wrong with the property. Then the second one is effluxion of time, the habis, uh, uh, naturally, uh, effluxion of time, expiry of agreement period. The third one is notice. Okay, uh, uh, you you can terminate based on a give notice lah, based on the provision in the lease agreement. Okay, that notice can be given to determine or to end the list. So that is when you use the provision uh, to give notice to your um, to your to, to the lesser okay, to end the list. And then operation of law. Okay, uh, by operation of law, two that's two many uh, two ways. One is frustration of contract. The maybe there's a lease on a building on a building on the land. Okay. And then the building is uh, burned down. The hard base, no more building. Or there's an earthquake. The building fell, top, uh, apa, fell down, uh, apa, is uh, destroyed by the earthquake. Or you know, frustration of contract means the subject matter is no longer there. Okay. Uh, and then the land has been compulsorily acquired by government. Okay. If the land, the whole land or part of the land uh, is acquired by the government, causing uh, no more land uh, to be leased, then that's it. Lah. Uh, uh, again, it can be frustration of law as well as uh, frustration of contract as well. Okay, no more subject matter of the lease. And then forfeiture, forfeiture, re entry on land by the court action due to uh, any national need. Normally, non payment of quick rent, for instance. Okay, the lesser, for instance fails to pay the quit rent for three years in a row, four years in a row, ten years in a row, okay, and then the government takes action, kan, takes action due to the non-payment of the um, quit rent, and then uh, the, the, apa, the land will revert back to the state authority and there's no subject matter of the lease, okay. Now, next on charges and liens, okay, part 16, uh, which uh, covers sections 241 until 281, what is a charge? A charge is a transaction whereby the registered proprietor of an alienated land or a lease conveys, conveys it as a security to another for repayment of loan or any other periodical payment. So you have your land, okay? you need to borrow money. So you use the land as the sandaran, as the guarantee against your loan or against your 
borrowing. So in this case, says the security to another for repayment of the loan or repayment of any periodical payment. So repayment of the loan, if you borrow hundred thousand, the hundred thousand is the principal. Okay, periodical payment is interest. Uh, interest on the uh, on the loan, maybe ten percent, seven percent, or whatever. So that is the periodical payment. Now. Um, for charge, Form 16A is used to secure the principal sum. So, you register the Form 16A on the principal sum. Form 16B to secure periodic sum. Okay. So, this one the banks will know. Lah, charges. And it says the registration is mandatory requirement for a legal charge. Otherwise, if not registered, the charge is then, uh, is, is then what is known as equitable charge. Uh, they are the effect, they are the sedikit, a little um, rights, uh, some rights under equity, not, un, uh, not and the rights are not guaranteed. The rights are determined in court, case by case basis. Compare that with the rights under national land code. Uh, the rights under national land code are guaranteed. Once the charge or once the lease, once the transfer is registered properly, uh, the other, upper perfect registration, kan? Then the rights are confirmed. Our rights are guaranteed under national land code. So uh, that's the difference between equitable and also um, the the what, registered uh, charge or the registered transfer just now. Reg registered dealings just now. Dealing instrument. If there are many charges, the first charge will have priority. So um, it, on one land, you may have many, many charges, a few charges, three charges, for instance. Charge 1 to UMBC, charge 2 to CIMB, charge 3 to Maybank, for instance. So, the first charge, UMBC, will take precedent, will get priority uh, over the, the other two banks. If in the case of uh, non-payment of loan, for instance, kan? Uh, there's an auction on the property. So, you receive a certain amount of money from the auction. Priority is given to the first chargee. And not just that, land acquisition, uh, can, uh, the compensation will also be considered, will also be paid according to the priority, to, according to who, which bank is the first, uh, has the first charge, which has the second and which the third and so on. Okay, So that's the importance of the date, uh, not only, sorry, not only the date, but also the time of the charge. Because you may have, Two charges being registered on the same day. Uh, the only difference is the time. Uh, so the time uh, of the registration can also determine the priority given. So what can be charged? So section 2241 sub 1 okay, outlines what can be charged. says that the whole but not part only of alienated land, the whole but not part only of any undivided share in any alienated land and list of alienated land. So, if you see here, the one number one, number two, I need quite similar to transfer, right? Uh, because you cannot charge part only of your share, part only of the land. Okay? Uh, quite similar to uh, transfer. Now, what about limitations of charges? Any So, this is quite similar to other limitations for other dealings. Section 241, sub 3, any prohibitions under National Land Code or any written law. And for alienated land, you look at the restriction in interest. For leases, again, look at the express and implied provisions of the lease document, of the lease uh, instrument just now, and cannot be charged. To two or more persons or bodies, uh, only can be uh, charged to two or more persons only as trustees or as representatives. So quite similar to transfer. Okay, now what about the rights and liabilities of charger? So section two four nine and two five zero. Okay. Uh, on the implied provisions uh, of the of the charge, whereby the charger must pay sums due to chargee, must pay the, the loan amount, lah, huh? must pay uh, sums due, must pay all the rents, the rates, the taxes and other outgoings in respect of the land to relevant authorities, must pay the quit rent, the assessment, what else, uh, if there's RPGT, uh, all these payments, if it's strata, must pay the parcel rent okay, to the relevant authorities. For alienated land, comply with implied and express conditions on the land. Why? Kenapa ni? Why? Why? Because the banks will be afraid lah. Eh? In the case of any breach of conditions uh, uh, that can cause the land to, to be surrendered or to be forfeited to the state authority. So, 
it is an obligation uh, for the charger to comply with implied and express conditions. Takutlah nanti ada breach of condition and that will have an adverse effect on the charger kan. And for lease, observe and comply with terms and conditions of the lease again, uh, because the because of the uh, the, the, the fear uh, of the land to be forfeited, uh, ataupun apa uh, any adverse effect uh, on the chargee uh, due to the non-compliance, due to the non-observation of the uh, terms and conditions just now, kan? Uh, then keep in repair all buildings on the land ensure full value of buildings on the land yeah in the case of fire of course the bank uh, the chargee will not want to to bear any losses uh, so that's why they insist yeah for the buildings buildings is also part of the land kan remember the section 5 definition of of land buildings uh, buildings pun part of the land so the buildings must be insured because building tu pun dikira sebagai land. So, we don't want any losses incurred on the land. Um, permit chargee or agent to inspect premises. Again, with reasonable notice. And says the section 215 and 216, the charger can transfer to another person. No problem with that. As long as the chargee gives their consent. What about the rights and liabilities of the chargee, the bank? And the bank just now. Section 215 um, uh, on implied provisions uh, on the chargee, whereby the chargee shall not unreasonably withhold consent to grant the lease or tenancy. Uh, mestilah memberikan kebenaran, must give the consent uh, to the charger uh, to to create or to grant lease. Of course, lah, the the landowner, the less uh, sorry, the proprietor will want to. Uh, generate profit. We want to generate income, uh, revenue from his land. So one way is by leasing out, by renting out uh, his property to other parties. Okay, so the chargee cannot um, deny okay, the the rights of the um, the proprietor to receive any profit or any um, income or any revenue uh, from his land. Section 218 sub 2 says the chargee can assign the registered charge to another person and in a, yang berdana harta just now, akan bank want to transfer to another party. Uh, maybe the bank. Ini, ada satu case whereby, not case, um, there have been in the past, uh, in Malaysia, cases whereby banks, they merge, kan? Uh, merge together and then from, uh, after the merger, okay, maybe the charge is transferred to the, the, the other banker. Uh, so, this allows uh, for the charge to be transferred. Assignment is transfer lah, okay? And then section 244, chargee is entitled for custody of issue of document title whilst the liability under the charge persists. Kenapa ni? It's because, okay, uh, by physically holding the issue document of title, you can prevent the title from being used for other purposes. Yang dia tak tahu kan? Uh, so, this is one. Um, this is an added security lah, huh? Uh, one way is by uh, registering the charge. So, when a title search is conducted, you will see the charge, uh, the interest of the charge, uh, the, the apa nama, kepentingan charge tu uh, on the uh, on the title search punya um, form. But one another way is to hold, to pegang uh, the title. So, it's typical, kan? Um, also, the same for... For movable properties such as uh, vehicles, lah, motorcycles, kind cars. Eh? When you uh, borrow, okay, borrow money to purchase a motorcycle, a car, a van, or whatever, you SUV, whatever, the grant, kan kita grant, kan grant kenderaan, the title of the or the deed, the title deed uh, of the of the vehicle, of the motor, of the motorcycle, of the car is held at the bank, and then after finishing payment, then only the title is given back to you. The original title is surrendered back to the uh, owner of the vehicle. Same principle there. Now, um, remedies for charges default. Okay, there are two remedies here that I can, that uh, can be explained. The first one is order of sale. The second one is taking possession. Now, uh, default means non-payment normally means non-payment lah. But, but there can, oh, can also be other types of defaults. Huh? 
But normally, tak payahlah. Tak payah. Uh, Non-compliance with express condition can also be considered as default juga. Ha, breach. Now, the first remedy, order of sale, upon any breach of provision by the charger, the chargee may serve, serve a notice in Form 16D. Okay, these are the three. The elements that are required in any notices. The first one, the form specifies the breach. Mesti nyatakan apa bentuk pelanggaran tu. Breach is pelanggaran. So, specifying the breach, requiring the remedy by the charger within a specified period. So, you tell the charger what was wrong, what you did wrong, and then tell the charger what needs to be done to correct the wrong and within what period of time given. Okay. And finally, warning that if non-compliance of notice, okay, it will cause the chargee to do foreclosure proceeding. If you don't do what is asked, then this is the consequence. Ah, two. Three things. One is the wrong. Two, how to correct the wrong. Three, the implication. Kalau you tak, if you don't and, uh, apa, uh, carry out uh, the remedial action. Now, upon expiry of the period in Form 16D and there's still no action from the charger, the chargee can apply for order of sale. So, order of sale ni satu perintah. It's an order that you obtain okay, from either, here it says that, for registry titles, application for order of sale is made to the High Court. Ha, dia buat di uh, Mahkamah Tinggi. For land office titles, the application for the order of sale is made to the land administrator kepada pentadbir tanah. So, it depends on the type of title. With the order of sale, then only the land can be auctioned. Okay, must get order of sale first. The second remedy is the taking possession, which is not applicable to land office titles or undivided share in alienated land. So, adalah dia punya. That is not, um, apa nama tu, is not general. Yeah? There are, there are um, non-availability uh, uh, for taking possession for certain types of a title, which is land office title, you cannot do. And divided share also, you cannot um, apa, um, pursue taking possession. Taking possession means, okay, uh, the chargee, or, uh, sorry, uh, taking possession as long as the liability continues. So, as long as the non-payment of rent, as long as the non-observance, uh, of the uh, express or implied provisions kan uh, occurs the chargee can occupy the land they boleh lock they boleh change the lock and then sit uh, work, enter the land and occupy the land that's one way another way of taking possession is not physically going into onto the land but taking any rents payable dapatkan all the incomes to come to the bank rather than going to the uh, to the charger okay so there are two ways of taking possession what is the procedure here? The chargee will serve Form 16J notice and upon the notice, charger is required to admit the chargee into occupation of the land and also taking rental from the land. If not, the chargee can apply to the court uh, for, for, apa nama tu? for possession. Uh, take possession. Next, what is lien? Uh, so, charge and lien, right? So, what is lien? Lien is also a security transaction. It's similar to charge in that way. Okay, both are security transactions. Both are used as security uh, for any borrowings. Uh, if you borrow money, you use the land for uh, to be charged or to as a lien, uh, as a charge or as a lien. Elements of lien. So it's quite different from charge in this way. One. The land title or the duplicate list must be deposited to the lender. This is mandatory. It, this is the main difference between a charge and a lien. For a charge, okay, the document of title is not mandatory to be given or to be kept by the chargee. But in the case of lien, the title must be deposited uh, or the duplicate list must be given to the lender. Intention to create lien. Uh, is this a must? There's a, there's a court case there. A court case that states that once you deposit, once you give your title to the the, the person who gives you uh, money just now, uh, you borrow money against someone. I am borrowing against uh, money from Ali and I give the title to Ali. That is intention enough. Uh, there is one court case. Meaning the intention to not, need not be in a written form. Tak perlu pun. Intention, niat kan? Niat, who knows about niat? But 
through action and by my action of giving my title for for holding for for Ali to hold and that is intent that shows my intention to create uh, the lien then finally this is another requirement entry of lien holders caveat uh, must be done but uh, tapi itulah uh, si entry of lien holders caveat it may not be as apa uh, secepat mungkin uh, tak, tak perlu yang pentingnya the the thing is there is a borrowing the title is deposited is given to the lender that is i think lah the essential i think that are uh, court cases that says that uh, if there's a borrowing and the title is given to the lender that is lien uh, sebab the entry of lien holders caveat can be done later 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 on doesn't matter there's no apa nama tu there's no um, deadline okay to enter lien holders caveat must be done kena buat tetapi kalau tak ada pun and if the other party uh, uh, challenge uh, the lien you boleh kata oh i belum masukkan lagi i haven't i haven't yet uh, uh, apa entered the lien holders caveat uh, so this is yes a requirement but there's no deadline for the entry of lien holders caveat says that i need this is what this is my point just now Different to charge lien mandates. Mandates mean wajib. Compulsory. Makes it compulsory. It is compulsory for lien for the title to be kept in the lender's possession. Okay. Sitambaran Chetty punya case. Uh, the case of Sitambaran Chetty versus Ramanadan Chetty. A lien is a mere retention of title for security. Thus, if the uh, title is surrendered, the, title, the lien is no longer uh, there lah. Mm. lender just now. Uh, gives back the title without the payment being uh, completed. Uh, itu dah menunjukkan no more lien because it def def defeats this one. The, the title is no longer uh, with the lender. So, maknanya no lien lah. Tak ada sandaran. Only the registered proprietor can create lien okay, whereby uh, the, land, uh, the title must be deposited to the lender. Uh, there must, must be intention and three, the element of intention. Uh, this one. The element of intention and possession is sufficient. Okay. Says that although failure to lodge a caveat does not entitle him to the right under national code, he still possess the right in equity. He can enter. Uh, in a no deadline. He can enter the caveat anytime. So, that was a court case. Yeah. Now, what about last one? The easement. Easement uh, comes under part 17. Okay. Part 17. Uh, sections 282 until 291. What is Eastman? Uh, the, in BM, the spelling of Eastman is I-S-M-E-N. Uh, kalau kita carilah Eastman. Eastman is the right or privilege. It's a right. Huh? Satu hak. Satu hak, a privilege. Given to a registered proprietor of a piece of land which is the dominant land. The right is given to the dominant land. Over another piece of land, uh, the right is given to a dominant land to use, uh, to do something on the Serbian land. So, in the case of uh, positive Isman, is the right to use another person's land. Uh, so, for instance, we have right of way. For negative Isman, right to prevent the use of another person's land in a particular way. So, right of light, for instance. Right of light is very interesting. Right of light, okay, say you have one, you have your land, you have your neighbor's land, okay, and you enjoy, this is your land, right? Sorry, this is your land, this is your, oh, this is your land, this is your land, this is your neighbor's land. Your land, your neighbor's land. Your land, the sunlight comes from this direction, for instance, right? And, Oh, salah ni. Oh, this is the mirror image. Oh my God. Mirror image. Say, there, there are two passes of land. You want to guarantee that the sunlight reaches your land. You can prevent your neighbor from building too high. Uh, because if the building is too high, it may prevent sunlight uh, from uh, reaching your land. So, you may enter into an easement with your neighbor. You will be the dominant land. Your neighbor will be the servient land because the your neighbor is serving you, okay? But the type of isman is the negative isman because you are preventing your neighbor from building too high, kan? Uh, but this one, normally, uh, I don't think it's, it is it's very rare to find uh, apa, a right of light in Malaysia. But in four weather countries lah, uh, in uh, Europe, uh, UK, semua tu, it's very 
uh, whereby um, sunlight or light is very uh, is a is very precious lah over there kan because they want to enjoy the sunlight in summer kan especially so they enter into uh, Eastman they enter into this kind of Eastman with their neighbor okay even though zoning uh, law or planning law um, allows allows for your neighbor to build uh, tall buildings but you pay uh, the, in order to create see, the, 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 is there okay let's see the how the easement is um, created an easement is an acquired right that must be created by the grant of the right by the surveying land now it involves agreement it involves negotiation between the dominant land and the surveyor land. So if in the case of right of light just now, the surveyor land refuses to give to the dominant land. So yeah, no easement will be created because essentially it's a contract. It's an agreement between two lands or two proprietors of land, surveyor land and dominant land. Uh, so they must negotiate, they must come to an agreement, then only the Isman is created. So if one party refuses to grant the right, there will be no Isman, right? Uh, and the Isman runs with the land because the Isman then will be registered. Uh, bila register masuk dana. Once registered, the Isman will enter, will be in the title, kan? So it will run forever and ever until uh, the Isman is cancelled uh, ataupun dah expire. Uh, we will see how. Eastman can uh, terminate. Now, terminate what else? Uh, Section 282 sub 1 governs Eastman the right to use the Serbian land or to prevent the owner of the Serbian land from using his land in certain ways. Section 282 sub 1. Section 283 sub 3 states that the rights do not include. So, what are the rights uh, not um, recognized? as Eastman's one the right to take anything from the surveyor land yeah, it's not a it's not a right that falls under Eastman uh, for instance um, you can okay uh, right away you can enter into the in, onto the surveyor land but the right does not give you uh, sorry the right of way does not give you the right for instance to take soil uh, soil or, or, or you know take uh, trees kan balak ke daripada your surveyor land tu uh, cannot and right to the exclusive possession of any part of the surveyor land right of way for instance you have the right to use use uh, your, the surveyor land but there's no way you can paga you can claim uh, the land as yours it's not yours you only have the right to use the land you do not have the right to possess the portion of the land used for the right of way. Okay. However, says they can use the surveyor land to place or maintain in or upon it any installation for the benefit of the dominant land. Boleh lah untuk letakkan sesuatu uh, untuk uh, apa nama? Untuk uh, kegunaan dominant land boleh letak for instance the right of way boleh letakkan um, you can put uh, metal road kan boleh ke boleh boleh road ataupun uh, you know uh, gravel okay uh, for for the ease of the vehicles uh, to use uh, to, apa to pass through boleh ha uh, yang mana boleh benefit the dominant but you cannot pagar you cannot put fence no it's not because it's not your portion of the land now some of the essential features for Eastman creation the first one is there must be a dominant and there must be a servian land two lands okay as i said before two lands one servian which is the servant one dominant which is the boss uh, the user or the preventer of the users now dominant land the Eastman must accommodate the dominant land the dominant land must use must must be able to use the servian land the third feature is the dominant land and the surveyor land owners must be different persons, cannot be the same. Once the dominant land purchases the surveyor land, the Eastman will be extinguished. Habis. No, uh, you must have different owners uh, uh, in order for the uh, Eastman to take effect. Kalau sama owner, kenapa nak buat? If, the, if it's the same owner, why should you create <laughs> kan, this kind of agreement? You... You are the owner of the two lands. You do not have to have the agreement to use your own land. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So the right granted must be capable of forming a subject matter of grant. So just now, okay, the right to use another person's land. The right to prevent the, the other person from using his land in a certain way. So 
must be capable of forming a subject matter of a grant. You cannot be too vague. Tak boleh jadi terlalu kabur ha? sampai tak boleh buat isman. Now, how do you create an isman? According to section 286, okay, the grant of the isman must be registered uh, again. This registration. So, after the negotiation uh, happens between the dominant land and the severe land owner and they reach an agreement, they, apa nama tu, they um, draw uh, a contract with uh, which both parties agree to the terms, kan, and payments are made, what not, okay. The Eastman must be registered using Form 17A. And for cross Eastman support, okay, one Eastman given to another part, uh, uh, sorry, uh, an Eastman is given for a, for dominant land on a severe land and then there's another uh, Eastman go, uh, given right to support, especially building and bangunan. Because sometimes you need support from the other, uh, the other land, the other land party, uh, sorry, the other land owner. So, you enter into an agreement that the other party uh, will always give you support huh, to your building. Otherwise, your building may be, uh, apa nama tu, can collapse ke, ataupun, you know, may suffer structural damage kan. Uh, so, can be done as well, uh, this kind of easement. So, you call it cross easements of support. Can be done using form 17B and then the easement shall come into existence with uh, missing. An easement can only be created by express grant, as I said before, negotiated and then a contract is drawn. Contract yang written punya contract, eh? express grant. Section 284 sub 1 states that easement will not be acquired by implying grant from long and in uninterrupted use. Eh? There's no such thing as implied easement. Just because someone lets you pass through his land doesn't mean that an easement is created. There must be uh, an express agreement between the two parties, between the, the two proprietors. Then only an easement can be uh, created. Then, okay, uh, here, um, Datin Siti Haja and Murgusu, the case, an easement can only be created with express grant of surveillance lands proprietor and using the correct instrument, in this case 17B, eh, for, the, uh, for the registration. The Eastman shall come into existence on the registration date of the instrument. So, Eastman. So, before this um, Eastman is registered, you only have contract between you and the, between the dominant and the surveying land. So, again, contracts, if there, there's any breach, you sue under Contracts Act. But you cannot ask for the protection or you cannot ask for your rights under National Land Code. Uh, until you register your Eastman using Form 17B. And prior to the registration, the dominant landowner would have a registrable interest, uh, registrable interest which can be protected uh, entering by entering a caveat. So having a caveat, you can prevent, uh, or you can uh, you can warn a uh, third party, or you can warn the world that there is an interest on the land. So in this case, there is a, a, an easement that will be registered, that is in the process of being registered. So you're warning the world at large okay, uh, of the possibility of uh, the registration of an easement in, a, in, a, in due time. Okay. Now, what are some of the restrictions to Eastman creation? So, you have there any, again, again, sama kan, same as before, any prohibition or limitation imposed by National Land Code or any other written law and any restriction in interest. If the, uh, if the land has lease or charge or tenancy, the consent of these uh, interested parties must be obtained. Eh? The lessee, the chargee, the tenant, uh, all their um, consent must be obtained first. And then says that no cross easement of a party wall except in respect of a wall which stands on their common boundary. And lah, kalau dalam apa nama tu, uh, boundary to boundary. So not uh, other than that, yeah. And must be certified by the director of survey and mapping. Now this is where I promised just now. How do we? How can we extinguish? How can we terminate? How can a, an easement be terminated? says that one way is by releasing the uh, Eastman. An Eastman can be released by the dominant. Again, dominant is the boss. 
the dominant owner enjoys some kind of rights over the surveillance land. So it is the prerogative. It is the dominant owner who has the power to release the easement by using form 17C. Another way is when the dominant land and surveillance land is the same owner under section 290, by operation of law, the easement will be extinguished, akan dipadamkan, no more. Because you have the same owner. What's the use of having easement? Um, and according to section 291, this is the power of the registrar to cancel the registration when the easement now comes under the same owner. Uh, the, sorry, the dominant land and surveillance land uh, has the same owner. Uh, so the registrar gets to know that there is a transfer, ada pembelian tanah uh, by the, there is a transfer of land from the surveillance land now to the uh, to the dominant land. So now both surveillance and dominant land belong to the same owner, no longer. Uh, so there's no longer easement according to section 290. So the registrar pun boleh lah, the registrar can cancel the registration of an easement. Uh, kalau katakan he was not, uh, sorry, if say uh, the Apa nama? The owner was not, didn't cancel kan himself. Okay. Eastman has been abandoned. So you may have a right of way. Okay. Uh, to use the Servian land. Okay. But then you never use it. Never use it for 10 years, 20 years or whatever number of years. So it can be um, cancelled. The, the Eastman can be cancelled by the registrar. Or when... The Servian land now, okay, uh, pre previously there is a right of way on his land and then uh, it becomes an, uh, an impediment, meaning dia punya right to enjoy, dia punya land pun sudah terjejas. Huh? Now his right to enjoy his land is being impeded, being prevented uh, by that right of way, by that laluan tu, kan just now. So what, uh, so he can complain or he can um, seek uh, the, the the apa nama the consideration by the registrar to cancel to extinguish the easement uh, because now his right as the uh, proprietor uh, uh, to enjoy to have a, to have quiet uh, use and enjoyment of his land sudah so terjejas sebab easement so he can apply to the registrar to cancel the registration of the easement or for instance yeah uh, easement is obsolete, meaning uh, you enter into um, an, an easement. The dominant land enters into an easement with the surveillance land to use the surveillance land, for instance, because he is second layer, landlocked, second layer. He needs the right of way to go to the to the uh, public road in front, uh, which is which uh, fronts the surveillance land. Kan? But now there is another road uh, being built uh, by the government uh, that uh, that passes along his rear boundary. So he no longer needs to use the surveillance land uh, to, to gain access to the front road. So now the use is obsolete because his land now at the back has a, has a road built by the government, for instance. And that's obsolete. Lah. So the, the registrar may uh, cancel the uh, registration of the easement. Okay, uh, cancellation. Okay, now this one just not uh, impedes the reasonable use. Ada, ah, dah, dah. I have discussed this just now. Okay. What about the remedies? If there's a breach of the easement, okay, um, what kind of remedies can be pursued by the by the dominant land? By the dominant land. Apa yang, apa tindakan yang boleh ambil? Sekiranya, uh, suddenly, the surveillance land refuses to grant the right of way. Or the surveillance land builds, can just now the right of light, can uh, preventing the surveillance land from building high up. Uh, now the surveillance land breaks, uh, they breaches the easement. Can what happens? It should be noted. Says there should be noted that although easement is categorized as a land dealing under national land code, easement is actually a covenant between one party with another. So easement essentially is a contract, is an agreement between one party and another party, between the dominant land and the surveillance land. So, in the case of breach of easement, okay, and the covenant carries certain terms of conditions, so means that the breach of the terms and conditions are the pelanggar, the breaches uh, that can be, um, can be pursued under contract law. Uh, 
bolehlah cuba contract law. Uh, because uh, contract law will protect uh, in this case. And and not just that, it will be strengthened by the national land code, the ability to pursue under contract law. Okay, so can pursue damages, specific performance, injunction. Uh, sorry, can I injunction? I cannot go back. Okay, anyway, uh, now damages just now ganti rugi, specific performance just now refers to an order to the court to, for instance, if there's an obstru obstruction to the right of way, specific performance. Uh, that you uh, an order for specific performance from the court may uh, ask the the what do you call the um, the survey land to remove the obstruction. Contohnya di buat gate kan? Uh, you may ask for to remove the gate to benarkan to let the dominant land to use uh, the right of way just now. Okay. Uh, now we go to restraints on dealings. Yeah, restraints is. Restraint is something that prevents the dealings from being registered. That's all. That is the operation. So, what is a caveat? So, caveat is a notice. Notice of a temporary nature entered by the caveater on the document of title to prevent the caveatee from undertaking dealings on the land. So, it's just a notice, okay, which is temporary, okay, temporary. Who enters? The caveator enters. Normally, the caveator is someone who has a registrable interest or has an interest on the property. Okay. To prevent the caveatee from undertaking dealings on the land. Okay. It will prevent any dealings to be uh, conducted on the land. How is it? How is the? How will uh, caveat prevent the caveatee from undertaking dealings? Because as long as a caveat exists, it will prohibit, it will freeze the title it will prohibit any registration any endorsement any entry of dealing matters so the form 14a cannot be registered form 14b cannot be registered the endorsement of the section 213 tenancy exam from registration will be prohibited from being done and uh, from being endorsed on the title again uh, so all this uh, the prohibition of the registration, prohibition of the endorsement, prohibition of the entry will cause the dealing not to be masuk, not to be entered uh, into the title, onto the title. And there are four types of caveats. The first one is the registrar's caveat. Okay, you can macam mana imagine ke dia? It's like a protective shield. Boleh? Protective shield or a protective film. Film atas sesuatu kan? Selagi tak koyak, uh, as long as you don't remove the film, you will not be able to touch kan, uh, the, the object. Same same concept here. Okay, that is a caveat. The caveat is a shield that protects the title. You cannot, tak boleh masuk kan, anything because of the caveat. As long as the caveat is there lah. So, once the caveat is removed, then you can enter uh, anything. You can enter, you can register on the title, you can register the forms, you can uh, endorse uh, the, apa nama tu, the dealing on the uh, title. Now, there are four types of type, uh, caveats. The first one is the registrar's caveats. Okay. The second one, private caveats. The third one, lien holder's caveats. Now, remember the lien just now? Okay, lien. Uh, you, apa dia, uh, we were talking about entering the lien holder's caveat. This is the caveat meant uh, just now under uh, lien. Okay, and the final one is trust caveat. So, you have registrar's caveat, section two, um, so on you see there. The sections are, um, apa nama, continuous, yeah, continuous. Registrar, private, lien holder, and trust. Now, what are the functions of a caveat? It restrains the registered proprietor from dealing with his land. Uh, you now cannot enter any uh, or you cannot register any dealings instrument, right? The second one, okay, one is it restrain the registered proprietor from dealing. The second one, it will protect the interest of the caveator for the time being until the final disposal of his claim against the proprietor. So, the caveat will not be there forever and ever. Okay. Uh, maybe the caveator is asking for some time for the court to decide his claim against the proprietor. They are the equitable interest, for instance. Equitable, equitable, okay, a good example would be like this. Someone who enters into a sale and purchase, okay, with uh, sale and purchase, uh, with the proprietor, okay. Um, the sale and purchase agreement is signed, 
okay deposit is is uh, paid okay suddenly the proprietor wants to sell to another party wants to sell wants to sell and then wants to uh, because he got a better offer and then uh, apa nama tu um, better offer what else better offer and then he's in his upper his He's going. He signed. He has signed a second set of purchase agreement. Okay, so now maybe the 14A is just a matter of of racing. Uh, racing, macam ni. Lomba lah. Mana satu yang register first? Ah, uh? it's just a race against time. Who registers the 14A first? Okay. Uh, so the first buyer just now to protect his interest because now he has a registrable interest, a registrable 14A. What he can do to protect his interest now is enter a caveat untuk freeze, to freeze the title uh, and then go to court to to ask the court to decide which sale and purchase is um, is valid. Uh, is it his sale and purchase or the second sale and purchase uh, agreement between the, the proprietor and the second buyer? Kan? Uh, so, in the meantime, okay, in the meantime, the caveat will prevent any 14A from being um registered on the land okay uh, itulah that's the use of uh, caveat protects the interest this the third one is serves as a notice to the world at large that the caveat has an interest in the land which he is protecting by means of the caveat there's a misspelling here this is not my by means of the caveat okay uh, this is especially for charge banks can normally charge charge is entered in the or on the uh, in the uh, on the title charge okay but besides that the chargee will want to protect his interest okay by putting uh normally it's private caveat ke? private caveat on the title dia punya bank bank punya to protect to protect dia punya charge okay protect charge not to protect the irregistrable interest. The second one is to protect the registrable interest. But the third one is to protect the punya existing interest in on the title. Okay. To protect another bank from um apa nama tu from uh, entering its charge without seeking uh, permission. Kan? Itulah. Huh? That's the purpose of having um apa, private caveat for the chargee. And then, finally, freezes the situation by maintaining the status quo of all parties concerned until the final disposition of the case. There are many, many cases involving land, yeah? So, not just um, the example I gave just now, whereby the, uh, there are two uh, almost simultaneous sale and purchase on the land. There can also be uh, claims, uh, ni, inheritance, kan, uh, between siblings ke, or, you know, case regarding, um, what else, regarding um, non-payment uh, of uh, loans ke, or what else, uh, regarding, uh, ni, compensation, land acquisition, okay, the division, the, the how the compensation, the compensation from the government is distributed, okay, you want, uh, apa, you want, you want the distribution to be fair, maybe you have a registrable interest and you don't want the money to be distributed first and you freeze the land first. Okay? Next. Registrar's caveat. Okay, what's that? We have four types just now. The first type of caveat is registrar's caveat. Caveat pendaftar under section 319 until 321, also known as land administrator's caveat. If it's a land office title, then it is known as caveat pentadbir tanah. Okay, uh, so it depends on the uh, title. Uh, so um, these are the uh, situations whereby land administrator's caveat can be entered. Okay, these are the circumstances under section 320. The first one is to prevent fraud or improper dealings. So, so in the case of um, suspicion, suspicion of um, any fraud, uh, fraud go, uh, taking place, maybe a statutory declaration is um, is used again uh, apa, as opposed to um, original title dengan katanya oh title dah hilang dia kata uh, the title original title is missing but the land administrator may want to inspect first do inspections kan uh, on the truth of the statutory declaration so itulah masukkan uh, registrar's caveat first uh, to prevent fraud or improper dealings to prevent the land from being uh, apa nama tu sold lah to another party Okay, kot lah jadi macam, it could be, apa, uh, the case of Bunsen Buyanit was an, uh, a perfect example of how, 
Okay. Uh, if there's any suspicion of fraud, the, the lab administrator or the registrar can prevent the fraud, uh, the suspected fraud from uh, proceeding uh, by putting the uh, registrar's caveat first. The second one, to protect the interest of the government, any persons under disability or persons outside Malaysia, so can be done, registrar can uh, enter ca registrar's caveat to protect uh, the government to protect any persons under disability or persons. The third one, to secure the land in case of debt payment to the government. For instance, in the case of income tax, there was once a case, yeah, Johor, Johor case. The land was, uh, sorry, the, there was a case involving this land, which um, the, the company owed so much yeah, to the inland revenue. Okay, duit banyak di hutang. Tapi dia berjaya jual. And, Accordingly, if you owe money to the government, the government should have been able to uh, for, to, 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 apa, to secure the land, to ambil tanah tu dan jual. Sebab tak, because you are, you owe the government some money, right? Uh, but in that particular case, okay, um, the apa the debtor, the debtor, the per, the company that owed the government money managed to sell because um, apa nama uh, no caveat. And that the restriction on the land. So managed to sell and then some more owed money uh, to the government. And at the end of the day, the, money, the government lost um, the opportunity to use the uh, land uh, to to, apa, to gain back money owed to the government. So itulah uh, use of research caveat. And also in that case, um, I think they amended uh, the um, for the first time. Research caveat can be can block the registration of the uh, of instruments of dealings that have been presented it can do that if the instrument of registration kata today is katakan say today is um, 11 November 2022 okay and a presentation of a registration uh, sorry presentation of 14A okay uh, transfer was done uh, was done um, October 2022 the registrar caveat can block retroactively, retrospectively, retroactively uh, the uh, instrument of dealing. Walaupun instrument of dealing tu was presented first before the caveat, before the registrar's caveat uh, for the first time lah. Uh, that was an improvement uh, in the registrar's caveat whereby it can block any presentation of instrument of dealing that was presented before the uh, registrar's caveat was entered. Uh, sebab dia nak block the registration tu walaupun presentation was done earlier than the the apa, entry of the caveat uh, sebab nak prevent registration okay presentation is one thing presentation means you go to the land office and then you present your form registration is another thing okay registration tu is when it will complete the uh, the apa nama tu the complete the procedure lah Pro, complete the transfer complete the charge kan uh, so registrar caveat has the effect that it can block any registration retro retrospectively. To correct errors on the document of title or instruments relating to the document of title. So one way uh, for the government, uh, sorry, for the registrar or for the lab administrator to correct any documents, first of all, you put the registrar's caveat first and then only you correct the document of title. Maybe um, related to the, to the fraudulent um, fraudulent apa nama tu, uh, transfer just now okay the land has been um, uh, apa na, the, the, the the registration uh, due, uh, which was based on a fraud was allowed and then it was discovered okay uh, but in Malaysia we we follow the deferred indefeasibility of title right so that means that this uh, the what you call the registrar still has some window of time to correct the mistake. Huh? In this case, registration done due to fraud, kan? Katakan dia forge dia punya, uh, dia, dia tipu diri dia kan, dia tipu conman, huh? uh, berlakon menjadi the um, the proprietor. Uh, and then using thumbprint or whatever. Now no more. Uh, now that computerized. But say that's the case. So to correct the situation, the registrar or the lab administrator can first enter registrar's caveat and then betulkan. Uh, correct the uh, mistake. Now, what about the duration of the registrar's caveat? Now, it says that different from private caveat that lapsed after six years, 
uh, registrar scavit continues enforced indefinitely forever until cancelled by the registrar based on his own motion, application by proprietor of the land or pursuant to a court order. So these are the three situations whereby the registrar scavit will end. Uh, bila registrar rasa dia akan dia hendak uh, tamatkan in, uh, based on his own motion application by proprietor of the land who now is facing maybe uh, difficulty uh, due to uh, the registrar's caveat and finally pursuant to a court order. Uh, maybe the proprietor successfully uh, obtain a court order to remove the registrar's caveat. And upon cancellation, the proprietor must be notified. The registrar must make a note of the cancellation under his hand and seal. Under his hand and seal means by his signature and his chalk uh, of the date of cancellation. What about the private caveat? This is the often uh, the the type of caveat uh, that we often uh, encounter, yeah, uh, in real life. Uh, so in out, outside lah. Uh, so we have the private caveat sections three to two to three to nine. Says there under section three to three sub one, private caveat may be entered by any person or body claiming title to or any registrable interest in any alienated land or any such right. So. Private caveat can be entered by the proprietor or by anyone who has registrable interest. Registrable interest, macam tadi contoh, uh, the example just now. Sale and purchase agreement has been signed. 14A has not been registered yet. So that buyer has a registrable interest. Uh, other, other, apa, you can use other um, examples, charge, for instance, bank, uh, yang sudah bagi loan, uh, that already has given the loan, but still haven't registered the charge. And then the bank is said to have a registrable interest in the land. Okay, registrable. Belum buat lagi, mung, uh, boleh buat, uh, akan buat. Any person or body claiming to be beneficially entitled under any trust affecting any land or interest. So, anyone or any uh, body, body means any organization uh, that, uh, that, that they claim uh, to have a beneficial uh, title. Uh, maknanya eh, trust lah. Ini amanah lah biasanya amanah ni. Trust ya. Yeah? Or any guardian. The guardian of any minor. Minors cannot hold land, right? Under uh, National Land Code, under Section 43, pers natural person must be above the age of majority, which is 18. So, in this case, the guardian of any minors uh, uh, can uh, uh, enter private caveat on the land. It's one of the three people three groups of people uh, that can enter private caveat. So, this guardian, okay, this guardian may act on behalf of dia punya, uh, dia punya, dia punya tu lah, guardian tu dia punya anak, li, anak dia lah, anak didik dia lah, bukan anak didik, anak jagaan, kan, the mind, the chargey, pun nanti you're confused, yang benda the charge, anak-anak uh, bawah dia, uh, anak didik dia, bukan anak didik, anak jagaan. The caveater makes an application to be makes an application. Okay, application must be made to the registrar or land administrator. The form used is 19B. So in the form must be stated the nature of the claim. Kena apa yang diminta tu? Nature of the claim. Whether the caveat is for the land or for any interest on the land. Okay, and together with statutory declaration and fees lah. Right, and the registrar will note the time. They can take note. Pukul berapa? Enter the caveat. Enter the caveat means we'll put, we'll masukkan, we'll enter the caveat on the document of title. The words private caveat entered under his hand and seal. What the caveat binds, uh, binds mengikat, uh, dia ikat apa? Binds the whole of the land. Binds one over two share of the line, macam tu, uh, of the land. Okay. Details of the caveat dimasukkan oleh bank CIMB berhad, for instance. Dimasukkan oleh Hasniati Hamzah. Macam tu. Details of the caveat. Time of the caveat entry. And finally, notification must be made. Same as before, ya. Registrar card must notify the registered proprietor caveat by, uh, by the form 19A. And section 328 gives the uh, the time limit for uh, private caveat which is 6 years continuously before it expires. Now, determination means the ending. There are four ways. One is withdrawal. 
uh, when the caveator withdraws under section 3 to 5 using form 8, the registrar will cancel the entry of caveat. So, this withdrawal is done by the caveator. Yang masukkan, dia yang keluarkan balik. So, the caveator. Second one, removal by registrar under section 3 to 6 uh, upon the application by caveat. Caveat kata there's no uh, valid reason uh, that, um, that the caveator, for the caveator to enter a private caveat. For instance, the sale and purchase agreement was never signed or the sale and purchase agreement was signed but the 10% deposit was never paid by the caveator. For instance, contoh lah kan. Uh, examples. Okay. So, upon application by the caveat, actually kan, uh, this is something that I read. Uh, the, cav the registrar or the land administrator has no power to determine the kesahihan, the right, uh, the apa, the facts, uh, the 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 claim of the uh, caveat just now. Dia tak boleh kata, oh betul tak bayar 10%. Dia cuma reason tu must be stated, but it's not the prerogative, it's not the authority of the registrar or of the administrator to check uh, the validity of the reason just now. He must remove. When the registrar or when the administrator receives from form 19H from the caveat, it is the responsibility of the registrar to remove. Ha, itu je. Dia tak boleh check tau. He's not the court. Dia bukan judge. Okay, registrar. Dia receive saja form 19H, then they must remove the caveat. The caveator must will be notified by, by the uh, by the uh, registrar or by the administrator bahawa ada satu permintaan that uh, apa that there is a the application using form 19H to remove the private caveat registrar will remove the caveat so what happens then so if the uh, the, the caveator feels that they still want to pursue they will enter again <laughs> sampai kiamat <laughs> okay like that uh, because it is quite funny, eh? but then again, registrar has no power to check the validity of the reason or of the apa nama tu, the justification given in Form 19H uh, by the caveat. Dia kena buat saja. The registrar is um, obligated to remove the caveat. Uh, Dia terpaksa. Then another uh, way to determine to end the caveat is by applying to court under section 3 to 7, applying for a court order by an aggrieved person, normally the caveat lah, tak puas hati kan, uh, normally the caveat. Lapse under section 3 to 8, so after 6 years, naturally the private caveat will lapse. Now what's the difference between uh, registrar and also private caveat? Registrar caveat, private caveat, both prevents, or this is the similarity, they both prevent the registration of any dealing instrument, but the registrar caveat is more potent. Potent tu lagi powerful. It's more powerful than private caveat because registrar caveat one can prevent the registration of any instrument of dealing presented prior. Ni ni just now the retrospectiveness, the retroactiveness of uh, registrar caveat tu. Uh, as uh, as opposed to private caveat. Private caveat only um, take effect on the day it's registered. Registrar caveat can cancel something uh, which was presented before dia uh, entered onto into the title. Okay, so dikatakan as long as the registration has not been completed, presentation done, registration dot not done yet, so the registrar caveat can at any time prevent the registration. Okay, and another difference would be the time lah, huh? the time uh, apa nama tu the the duration of the uh, caveats, both caveats. Registrar caveat can run forever. Private caveat, maximum six years. Now, the third type of uh, caveat is the lien holders caveat uh, under section 330 and 331, whereby a lender who holds the borrower's issue document of title, IDT. So, again, document of title, there are two copies. One is the IDT, the other one is the uh, office document of title. Uh, sorry, the RDT, the register document of title. So, RDT is is um, is held at the office lah, either the PTG or at the land office. IDT is held by the proprietor. So, a lender who holds the borrower's IDT as security may enter a lien holder's caveat on the title rather than accepting a charge by the borrower. So, in this case, uh, can enter 
uh, lien can use lien holders caveat rather than using a charge huh? and under section 331 only the lini can enter lien holders caveat okay lini is the lender for instance financial institution and the lien holders caveat will only appear on the register document of title rather than the idt idt tu kat luar kan so whatever is uh, entered uh, uh, is the uh, register document of title only unless the idt is is apa is rendered back to the uh, land office to be updated but that will not happen because once you give away once the liner sorry once the lini uh, surrenders gives gives kan bagi dia punya idt itu maknanya there's no lien kan remember must be in his possession at all times kan the effects of a lien holders caveat is similar to private caveat but the lien holders caveat does not expire after 6 years uh, longer term lah if there are more than one proprietor, the uh, the, the one with the uh, IDT, the document must be, sorry, the, what's that, um, the, the deposit of the IDT with the lini must be with the consent of other proprietors as well. I must setuju, okay? Setuju macam mana? If you forge, how? Uh, so that is one thing lah. Huh? When I forge the open one to forge the form, the, the consent form ke, could happen lah. And that's one disadvantage huh, of uh, this system. Now, the fourth type of caveat is the trust caveat under section 332 and 333 entered by the registrar on any land or interest held by any persons or bodies as trustees sebagai pemegang amanah okay so who will enter registrar on what on the land or on the interest uh, by whom held by persons or bodies sebagai pemegang amanah saja so for instance for uh, person uh, for a uh, guardian of a minor just now, okay? Uh, okay, so he can. Um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, just yeah. So the registrar can enter a trust caveat on the land to freeze to avoid, for instance, the guardian just now to sell the land off to another person. Okay, because on the land now there is a trust caveat. Yeah, mama look at that will. Um, alert that will alert the buyer for instance that will alert the registrar for instance if there's an attempt to transfer the land kan sebab tanah tu sekarang dia bawa amanah right the land now is under trust it does not belong to the guardian it does not belong to the board of, tra board of trustees for instance so a trust caveat may be entered onto the land and the trust caveat uh, will prohibit the registration endorsement or entry of this of instrument of dealing, uh, claim to the benefit from section 213 tenancy and finally lien holders caveat uh, boleh di prevent juga, uh, can be prevented from endorsement and uh, who can create, uh, what, sorry, how, how, uh, application from whom, from the existing trustees, from person or body who transfers the land to the trustees, for uh, from the person or body by whom the trust or trust interest is created uh, for instance kan in the case of the guardianship just now kan guardian goes to okay say like this um one um a child becomes an orphan okay mak ayah dia matilah the parents die okay parents have a parcel of land so the child is below 18 years of age there are two um uncles uncle a uncle b Okay, Uncle A is appointed as the legal guardian uh, for the child. Okay, so now Uncle A serves as a trustee, can serve as a, as a trustee on the land. Okay, Uncle B tu just now, Uncle B can apply for a trust caveat to be entered on the land. Sebab takut uh, on the fear, uh, on the uh, on the apa nama, uh, on the risk uh, to 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 avoid. Uh, uh, the risk of Uncle A slash the guardian from transferring the land, for instance. Kan? Uh, so that's one case, one example of how trust caveat can be entered by another person. Trust caveat will remain in force until cancelled by registrar upon request by trustee or person or body beneficially entitled and trust, for instance, kan? in the case of the uh, minor just now, once he reaches the age of majority, he can uh, apply for the trust caveat to be cancelled. Now, that's all my reference. I think um, for you guys, um, go and have a look at the slides again. And I think I know Jaria, uh, the book is beneficial for you guys to 
read because it's more detailed than this lecture. With that, I thank you and see you again. Bye.